This week on GEN, we bring you the highlights from the Winter Choir Concert, take you off campus for the Holiday Light Parade, and bring you some last-minute gift ideas. GEN starts now. Good morning, and welcome to this year's first episode of GEN. I'm Nora Duenas. And I'm Mercy Calvo. We've gone through some big changes here at GEN, so you can anticipate a new look and some fresh ideas for this year. Despite the rain and cold weather, the choir sang to a full house for their winter concert. Kayla Jimenez was there to capture it. And the city of Desert Hot Springs held their annual holiday parade this year with a new twist. Kaylin Castillo brings you the story. Christmas lights, carnival rides, and lots of fun. On December 8th, Desert Hot Springs held their annual holiday parade with a twist. Instead of holding it on the usual daylight, they transformed it into a light parade and ended with a small carnival on Pearson. The parade started on two bunch, ran through Palm Drive, and ended on Pearson. Spectators viewed floats and performances filled with lights and were introduced to the 2019 DHS Court in Ms. Ventura County. DHS Princess M. Freshman Iran Orozco had participated in the parade before but had never been titled Princess. It is very exciting, it's also nerve-wracking, and I'm just honored to represent DHS. While the festival included live music performances featuring a small number by the DHS-HS choir program, the parade included appearances by DHS-HS marching band Color Guard and ROTC. Marching band member Jade Figueroa is new to the city and noticed a better turnout in the night parade rather than the one during the day. It's very different starting in the beginning of the day than at night because I feel as if people have their Saturday set as in their schedule, what they're doing. So maybe at night it gives people time to really come out and show support for the school and the extracurriculars. If you weren't able to attend this year's live parade, make sure to come to the next one. I'm Kaylin Castillo reporting for GEN. It's sweaters for the sweater drive to give the people in need. Aren't you gonna donate that sweater too? No, this is my favorite sweater. It's way too beautiful to be donated. Okay. The holiday sweater drive ends December 21st, so make sure to bring your jackets and sweaters in good condition to room 309. Singing Society. On December 5th, the Desert Hot Springs High School Choir Program held their annual winter concert in the DHSHS Theater. The concert did not only include songs sung by the classes as a whole, but also solos from Leslie Robles, Jose Escobedo, Jessica Padilla, Joey Torres, Elizabeth Hughes, and Samantha Carrillo. This was senior Jessica Padilla's second solo and fourth year performing with Concert Choir. This is my first time actually um, doing Decamichi, so it was different. I've been singing like since I was little. I had just grown up singing. Each of the songs performed included its personal storyline when the whole choir class was not on stage. Senior Edna Escobedo has also sang with choir for four years and still feels the rush when performing in front of an audience. I recommend anybody who likes to sing in the shower to come sing for the choir program only because there's a lot of talented people out there. And I think this choir class is a great experience to sing in front of people. If you were not able to attend this choir concert, make sure you attend the next one in May. I'm Mercy Cabo reporting for G-E-N. The Lady Eagles basketball played their third league game. Let's not forget about soccer. We have a throwback segment from our boys soccer team against La Quinta earlier in the month. Okay, ladies, ready, set, shoot. On Tuesday, December 11th, the Lady Eagles basketball team went head-to-head -head against the 29 Palms Wildcats at Desert Hot Springs High School. The Eagles were defeated by the Wildcats with a score of 63-7. The game set the Eagles league record to 0-3 and their overall record to 2-7. During the game, only a few spectators attended to support the Eagles other than the cheerleaders. Senior Cheyenne Quidiquit has been playing for two years and has been noticing the lack of support not only during the girls' basketball game, but all female sports as well. 
they go to the games because we're, the boys are winning, the girls are not, and it does kind of affect us in a way. We think like we're not good enough. A lot of people talk down on the girls' basketball, but they don't come to their games and they don't see how hard we hustle. The Eagles' next conference match is on Tuesday, December 20th against Coachella Valley Arabs. I'm Lucy Vanco reporting for GEN. What's wrong, Bryce? I didn't study for the final, okay? I didn't. I, I think I'm gonna fail. You should ditch. The only thing I can tell you is this. Maybe you should guess. You should just drop out and be a SoundCloud rapper. Man, whatever. Thanks for nothing, bro. Don't count on your friends. Just study. The cold and the rain didn't stop the Eagles from putting up a fight. The varsity boys soccer team went head-to-head -head against the La Quinta Blackhawks on November 30th at the Eagles' home stadium. Both teams ended the game with a tight score of 1-1. This game totaled the Eagles' record with two wins and two ties, keeping them undefeated. Senior Carlos Alvarez is a second-year player and believes that this particular game had unfair calls. The most significant play that the ref made was when he called the handball on me. Just from that, like getting scored on, I saw my teammates' heads like go down. Honestly, it shouldn't even be like that. It should have just woke us up, but instead it woke up the other team. During the game, the ref issued each team a yellow card and also awarded a penalty kick to the opposing team, scoring the goal that tied the game. Right midfielder Ezekiel Monero also believes that the game should have had a different outcome, but didn't worry about his team's performance. Honestly, we didn't think much of it um, when they switched our keepers. It wasn't really a big switch because we have a lot of faith in our team and as well as Johnny. We all know he could keep well, so we have a lot of trust in him and not just in him, but our whole team in general. This concludes the Eagles game against the Blackhawks. I'm Nora Jonas reporting for G-E-N. What do you want for Christmas? A recent visit from Santa's Elves gave DHS students a chance to send their orders straight to Santa's workshop. But the season isn't all about receiving. It's about giving, too. We have some gift ideas for you. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. Hi, everyone. I'm Miranda, and we're here at Kmart to give you guys some wonderful gift ideas, such as some scarves, some gloves, some hats. I like this. So here we have mugs for $15. Um, you get four for $15. I said that already. Yeah, if uh, you know anybody who loves cars, perfect gift idea. <laughs> Give somebody a big fat kiss this holiday season. There's a hot springs? Santa! You would like me to make a list? Make a list, make a list! I'll get the scroll. Okay. And what would you like for Christmas? Straight A's in my report card. I don't think Santa could give you that. Money so I can help my mom with her rent. True love? True love? I'll see if Santa could do that for you. All right. Oh, you want Santa to do A puppy. A puppy? Yeah. Uh, what's it? What? Oh, a video game console. To make sure that everyone's happy. Let's see. Probably a new camera. New camera. Yeah. Canon 60D. World peace. World peace. Look. Peace on Earth. Thanks for joining us this week. Make sure to study for those finals. You can find this and all our episodes on YouTube at our channel, Golden Eagle Network. Happy holidays from all of us here at GEN. We'll see you in 2019. I'm Nara Duenas. And I'm Mercy Calvo. And we're signing out for GEN. -E